Hello YouTube, Actor Celia from The Working Gamer and this time with another how-to video. This video is more aimed at beginners of Microsoft Excel and not just specifically working gamers, so anyone could really find some use out of it. As most working gamers out there know, skills in Microsoft Excel are pretty much required in the workplace. But this video is not just aimed at working gamers, pretty much everyone can learn something from this one. I'm going to show you 10 Microsoft Excel shortcuts and tips that might just make your day go a little smoother when working with it. Bear in mind these are not advanced Excel tips by any means, they're just meant to get you going. More advanced users will find more use out of more advanced videos, some of which can also be found on this channel. Quick intro. Alright, we're going to be going through all 10 of these tips as I've mentioned before, but before we get started, quick reminder, if you want to see more of this content or any other gaming related content for uh, the working class, millennial, gamer, whatever you want to call it really, down below, subscribe, click the bell button, and a video will pop up in your homepage every time I upload one, which is usually three times a week. If you do like this video, hit the like button. It'll give me a pretty good idea of what you guys like, what you prefer. If you have any other starting tips that I might have missed, in the comments down below, and it will probably make it to a part two. Number one. Autosum. Let's say you want to add up all the numerical values in column B. Now usually you would type a formula manually, in this case the sum formula to add them up. It works, but there's a much shorter way to add up all the adjacent cells. Select the cells you want to sum, right up to where you want the result. Then click on Autosum on the right side of the ribbon and done. Autosum filled in the formula for you. Number 2. Auto Average. Auto Average uses pretty much the same process. Select your cells, then click on the arrow next to Autosum. Select Average and your average value is dropped in underneath your selection. You can also cut and paste it wherever you like, retaining the formula. Number 3. Using Autofill. Autofill is a pretty handy tool and is used often. Let's say you want to continue the logical path of these numbers. Select them and drag down on the bottom right corner of the last cell. Autofill can see what you're trying to do and completes the rest. The same can be done with months for instance. Select the first couple of months, drag down and it completes the rest for you. And again, the same goes for number patterns. In this case, every number is incremented by 5. Dragging this down will complete the pattern and give you multiples of 5. Autofill usually needs 2 to 3 values to figure out what you're trying to do. It also works with formulas and you can save a lot of time doing this. Number 4. Conditional Formatting Conditional formatting changes the format of your cells based on the condition within those cells. Before we start with those, let's have a look at some of these handy shortcuts. The color scale options automatically colors your cells based on their values relative to each other. Here, the highest number is the colder one. You can also reverse it or even centralize it. Almost every option has an inverse. There are also icon sets you can use. I personally use the ratings icons the most and as you can see here, they can save you a lot of time and add some style to your worksheet. If you want to do some more manual conditional formatting, this is how you do it. Select your cells, click on conditional formatting on the ribbon and select an option. Here we chose less than and we can now specify for all values less than 3, the cells should be formatted with a red full. And there we go. Keep in mind, these values can be changed at any time and the formatting will conform to the condition that you have set. If you want to get even more manual than that, just select your cells again. Click on Conditional Formatting and then go down to Manage Rules. Click on the rule in the list and then on Edit. You can now change all aspects of the Conditional Formatting rule to your liking. Number 5. Filters. Filters are essential tools for larger datasets. To create a filter, highlight your dataset, click on Sort and Filter and then on Filter. You will now see that your headers have little drop-down boxes next to them. Clicking on the drop-downs allows you to sort the dataset by a column's values, for instance sorting by employee number, or sorting the other way. You can also use the filter to select or deselect displayed values. Deselecting certain values removes them from your visible dataset even though they still exist. You can see the row numbers now skip the hidden rows. This is especially handy if you're looking for only certain types of data in your dataset. Number 6. Graphs and charts. Sometimes we just want to quickly make a chart or graph of a part of our dataset. Luckily, Excel gives you a quick and easy way to do this. Select your descriptions and values. Since they are not adjacent, you can hold the control key down to select multiple cells. 
Now click on insert and then click on the bar chart button. You can now even select the style for your chart. Once the chart's created, you can edit or fine tune it a bit more or even change its style completely. Number seven, the ideas feature. The ideas feature is not used often, but can sometimes give some interesting results if you're stuck. You can access this feature by just clicking on the ideas button on the ribbon. It will automatically analyze your worksheet to find a dataset and offer you some suggestions to represent or reformat the cells. These usually include pivot tables and a few charts. Let's insert one to see how it looks. Number 8. Tables. The tables function is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Select the cells you want to give a table format and click on the Format as Table button. You can choose from many different table styles here. Using this method you can quickly and easily give your data a professional presentation that catches the eye and stands out. Number 9. The Format Painter. The Format Painter is useful if you want to copy the format of certain cells to others. Let's say that we want to copy the grey, bold, italic and outline format on the left to the cells on the right. Select the cells on the left and click the Format Painter button. Now select the cells on the right and press Enter. The formatting from the left hand cells is now applied to the ones on the right. And number 10. Formatting cells. Cell values themselves can also be expressed in different formats. For instance, in this asset list, we might want to give the last column a currency format. Select your cells and click the currency format shortcut button and choose your currency. And there you go. Not all values in that selection will automatically be expressed in currency format. You can also increase or decrease the number of decimals by clicking on the decimal buttons at the top. But you can do more than just add currency formats. Highlight your cells again, right click on them and then click on format cells. You now have a wide selection of formatting options available. Let's turn these values into a number format with two decimals and a thousand separator. Remember, this formatting stays applied to the cell, no matter what value you enter in there. Alright, those are the 10 tips for this video. Like I said, they're pretty basic, but if you'd like a video with more advanced tips like pivot tables, VLOOKUPs, macros, and so forth, Give me a shout, we'll make one. Keep in mind, a lot of these tips might work in Google Sheets as well. If there is any interest for a video on Google Sheets, do let me know. Comments down below. And again, if you like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. In fact, you can pretty much click whatever you want, really. You can even click dislike, but, you know, please don't. And as always, it's been great making this video. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.